if stats can't go to a really easy three base macro oriented style then neither can we um, at least on ephemeron so do remember that we are playing on ephemeron in particular and that influences everybody's decision making at every level so the pros are thinking i can't do my propolis and thunderbird builds on this map or even disco builds on this map and uh, that's going to influence what we see today <laughs> okay so as for the start it's almost always this um, we don't have any wonky openers so you could literally copy and paste most of the games and they'll look almost exactly the same every time it's just gonna be nice two gas two gate cyber for both of our opponents you can look at the production tab uh, stats is actually like half a second ahead of zest so we can predict that that's an easy win for stats just off of that basis um, it is a balanced game of course so the guy that's half a second ahead always wins and then scouting after the second gateway nothing unusual there at all except for this we're not scouting we're actually just going straight to the proxy location Notice how we're rallying into gas, we got 16 out of 16, and then he pulls one guy off of minerals, so he's 15 out of 16, uh, but that's it, you never go for more than 15, rather, you never go for less than 15 out of 16 on minerals. It seems to be something that all of them do, and you can see the second pylon is placed on time, except it's the proxy pylon, so extremely easy for Zest to come in here, see that there's no second pylon, and then at least be aware of us very strong possibility of either a proxy robo, proxy stargate, and even a proxy gate is often the case. But this is a proxy robo build, and proxy robo I think is probably the most common thing in PvP, even more common than Sentry Stalker, and it's very funny that Stats decides to do this against Zest, who basically pioneered the strategy and does it more than anybody else. Although in this game, very strangely, Zest doesn't proxy his robo, he just builds it in his main. And we'll see what that means, where you have a proxy robo versus a robo in the main. You would assume that the defender has the advantage, because, you know, Zest's robo is closer to the action outside of his base than uh, Stats' robo is. You can see Stats just using his first two stalkers. By the way, it's two stalkers, not two adepts. And once the robo is done, instantly we're chrono boosting an immortal out. You'll see other people go for war prism and things or observer, but like uh, stats is going for as early of an attack as possible here. He builds a shield battery at three minutes, which is very very early. Uh, so that's going to finish up by around uh, three thirty, and I think that's earlier than a oracle can ever really get. I don't think you can get an oracle there. I think three fifty or four minutes, right? Well, we'll have a look. There's plenty of proxy oracle uh, games in Home Story Cup. So it's an immortal, which is very mineral heavy, 275 minerals, and then a war prism, which is very mineral heavy. So you can see, in terms of units, stats goes for four stalkers and then the immortal, and then he pushes with that immediately. It's very, very quick. All of this is very quick. So. If Zest has a base right here, a Nexus, you can see that's where Stats is A-clicking. He's saying, if you went two units and a Nexus, you're cancelling that Nexus, and if you try and defend, you're going to lose the game. So this is kind of blind that Stats is playing, but he knows that the a lot of builds involve two units and a Nexus, or four units and a Nexus. Um, even if it were six units and a Nexus, this would just deny it, right? If, if it was any kind of early Nexus play, then that Nexus is denied. So that's the whole point of this four stalker and immortal thing. Uh, but Zest actually just goes six stalkers and then a robo. Um, so he's basically just going three gate robo from his main and stats is going three gate robo but the robo is proxied. And something very weird happens in PvP and it happens all the time and that's the one who gets to the opponent's ramp is the one that gets to contain them and it's literally like that simple you can have much less stuff and still be able to contain them also notice that stats with his third pylon or fourth pylon i think actually so this is the first one that's the second one there's the third one and the fourth pylon walls out uh any adepts that can come in 
I, I suppose even DTs would be somewhat stopped by this, but not much. Um, it's not a big problem if you have a robo. It's not even that far to um, shoot an observer across the map. Because um, we're halfway, so wherever the DTs are, the robo is kind of close to dealing with it. Of course, there is the scenario where the DT snipe the pylon, and then you end up losing just for that reason, um, because your robo is so unprotected here. Um, anyway, but what happens is, uh, stats, he says, okay, you haven't got a natural, I'm fine with that, I also don't have a natural. Now I'm going to contain you on one base, and you're basically always going to go robo bay from here, and go either Colossus or Disruptor, and like, there isn't much else you can do to try and break out. You can't really go Stargate and try and break out. So what Stats does is simply go a Stargate after this contain and expand. And anything out of a Disruptor or Colossus kind of style will fail to just having a couple of Phoenixes out on the map. Um, so you see that's exactly what happens. Zest tries to uh, send two Adepts just in case Stats didn't wall this out, but he walled this out very early. Stargate goes up. Uh, basically we make, let's have a look at the units again, right? So we've got one Immortal and four Stalkers, two Adepts and a War Prism and a Sentry. So it's like a kind of a mixed army and then you just go Stargate and you say basically anything you can make to break out of this situation, I'm going to counter with your Stargate. And that's it. That's the whole chess PvP situation done. Like that's all Stats is doing here. It's very simple. The game basically ends at like the part where Zest builds a Robo in his main, and that's it. And it's just very clean. Um, and it just shows you why it's so strong to proxy stuff because you get to go and attack your opponent faster than they attack you, and the one who gets to the ramp is the one that gets to contain it because the ramp is such a big deal. You know, it's hard to just run down there because the concave is going to be awful for you. It's hard to use a tech unit to uh, defend the ramp location. So like, even if you have a disruptor, shooting it down the ramp is kind of awkward. And um, it doesn't even matter at that point that Zest could be making a bunch of better units than stats, but still not be able to break it. And that's all that we're leveraging here. End up killing the pylon at the ramp and then just expanding. Zest does try his best. He uh, he says, "All right, I found your proxy robo. I'm gonna take a war prism and two immortals and kill your robo, or at least depower it, so you can't make any better tech units." But uh, it is just a, a simple look at this game sense, by the way. It is just a very simple um, maneuver here. The game sense of stats is that he knows that Zest found him. So he's pulling back right now. Successful. You can see he's actually loading up two immortals in his war prism and he's going to fly by and just just narrowly sees Zest with the war prism. And Sats isn't dumb so he probably assumes that there's two uh, immortals in here and that is exactly what's happening. Uh, so he knows what's, what's up and uh, Zest does as well. You know, two immortals is just very irritating to uh, deal with. Because you can't, like, the only thing that shoots up is Stalkers, other than Sentries, which is obviously not a DPS unit. And um, Stalkers get wrecked by the thing the War Prism drops. So it's actually really annoying to deal with. Uh, although Stats has Phoenixes out, and as you can see, this is just a kill move. You've got two Immortals and a War Prism. Both cannot actually do anything to this. And uh, Zest is trying to figure out a way how he can not lose his two Immortals. His only play was to recall instantly once he saw the first Phoenix, was just to recall, because. Uh, Phoenixes take forever to kill a war prism. But you know, at this point we're microing with the war prism so we don't actually lose anything there for stats. And Zest loses two immortals, which is not a cheap unit to lose for free. Yeah. And you can see why the Robo Proxy is just very versatile. Because you can just go Immortals and deny the natural, or you can just get the War Prism and just use it for utility units. And there's a certain point where, as long as you've got a couple observers out and a War Prism, you don't actually need the Robo. Like, Immortals are not going to be the unit that you're going to be spamming for the whole game. So yeah, now Zest is obviously in a terrible position, having lost the uh, two Immortals for free and not got an expansion on the way. Stats does have an expansion on the way. 
and that's a huge issue. Yeah, exactly. Uh, two Immortals is like losing two Nexuses. It's 375 resources for one Immortal. And then of course he lost the War Prism as well, so he actually lost more than two Nexuses when you factor in that. Uh, and now you can see Stats goes for a Void Ray, because he knows all he has to do is defend. He doesn't need more Phoenixes to try and uh, lift some probes and, and get some more kills that way. He does this two immortal attack. I think he knows that Zest is moving across the map right now, because if he doesn't and he just lets him mine, then Stats wins that way. Um, so that's why there's not much stuff here for Zest. Oh, even the War Prism dies. That's tragic. But Zest finally does actually move across the map. There's kind of a delay there. He seems to be a little bit unsure whether or not he should attack our Zest. He, he uses a Colossus because if you go Disruptor against Phoenixes, then the Phoenixes just lift up the Disruptor uh, and it's not very uh, useful. But the Colossus is a good all round unit and Phoenixes don't really do much damage to them. So it's the best thing you can make. It's still not great though. You can see just how, like, look at how much damage that Colossus is actually doing to anything. And then you have the most one sided finish to the game, which is just. Stats actually recalls the two Immortals as well, so it, this wasn't even close. This was an absolute bloodbath of a game. Yeah, look at the resources lost tab and tell me that stats didn't just completely run away with this game. From like the four minute mark. The part where Stats builds a Robo in an, a proxy location and Zest doesn't, it means that... I just want to just stress this right. If Stats has his Robo here, the Immortal gets here much later. He's got half a map to travel, right? But it being so quick... Also, look at how uh, aggressive Zest is scouting, and he still doesn't scout the Robo until this probe finds it much later. Um, so yeah, the whole point of this is that it gets to the opponent's base so quickly that you can then take the ramp. And also the fact that there's always two gateways here means that you always get a free gateway because it's such a nice, this is such a nice open space and try and defend this gateway by like squeezing your units either in this uh, space choke here or on the ramp which is another choke. So it's kind of abusing the fact that Protoss all open the same way as well. Um, so you've got six stalkers and an immortal to meet those stalkers, right? Of course, if Zest had just gone for a really fast immortal himself, then he would be able to swat away the um, push here, because he would have his second immortal faster, and I think that would make up for it. Or at least his war prism would be faster, and Stats shouldn't have a second Immortal for that fight. So there'd be a nice window of time where Zest could shoo away Stats and then hold his natural. But the problem with this is Zest has no idea that it's a proxy Robo unless he scouts it. And I guess that's the big deal in this game is that Zest did a really good job scouting. He was just very unlucky. And you can see his pylon is here. He did a, His second pylon is a proxy pylon. He didn't actually build anything off of it, but it's just to make adepts and things. He doesn't actually see something that's so close to it, obviously, and that's why he doesn't scout here, because he's like, I've got a pylon, I would have seen it, but he doesn't. And he doesn't know if it's a Stargate. If it's a proxy Stargate, for example, you don't want to be making Immortals, I guess, for that, and that's why he didn't. Because imagine if uh, uh, Stats did a Stargate and realizes that Zest is making Immortals, and then he makes a Phoenix to just negate... Again, it's a 375 resource unit, the Immortal, right? So... If you can just make a phoenix and negate it in the fight, then that can be disastrous. So Zest opens with a War Prism. Or does he? Or is he just late? I think he's just late. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. He's going War Prism, and then he cancels it, and he makes the Immortal. He's actually Chrono Boosting it. So that's another sad thing. So he sees here, oh no, we have an Immortal at our door. I think he just cancels it. He cancels it last second. That's very strange, actually, because it's not like a War Prism is a bad support unit, and when it's 85% done, you'd think you would uh, keep it. But I guess it's expensive, and his Warp Gate just finished, so he's like, I'm going to make units to defend this. I don't know if that was the right decision, though. I feel like having a Warp Prism is always extremely useful. He immediately makes two adepts as a response to this, so he's a Zest is doing as best as he can from what he's seen. But um, 
It just seems like a dire situation. I think maybe if he scouted the robo instantly, but then what are the li what's the likelihood of scouting the robo as opposed to not scouting the robo? It seems less likely that you'll actually find it. And again, look at look at Zest scouting. It's just so good, and he just happens to miss it. And if you imagine on the ladder, everyone scouts with like one thing. It's like, all right, I'm gonna scout for your proxy thing. It's gonna be one probe though. <laughs> Zest uses like four things and still doesn't find it. So just look at the minimap right now, he's just all over the place. I am here in the shadows. <laughs> so he's literally scouted everywhere, like it could be a Stargate here, Stargate here, Stargate here, DT Shrine, uh, anything except for this one place. Stats just happens to have a robo. And it's not like the game is over or bad for stats if the robo is found, it's just if it's not found, it seems to be disastrous. Because again, Zest just doesn't know to make an immortal first against this. I think that's genuinely it. It's that if he had gone for the immortal first, he'd be in an okay position.